Hey everyone, Srini here from Unmistakable Creative, and today I want to talk about how you use the Zettelkasten method for taking smart notes in MEM. If you haven't heard of Zettelkasten, it's something that Sanka Ahrens, who is a German professor, actually recently made all of us aware of, and it's turned out to be a very invaluable tool for me just in a couple of days in terms of improving my note-taking ability. And it's very different than the way that we typically take notes because it allows us to get more out of the notes that we take in and the information that we capture. I think that we read to learn and we write to understand what we've learned. And Zettelkasten actually forces you to gain a deeper understanding of what you've learned. And you'll find a lot of videos uh, about Zettelkasten if you look for it. I think the best one is the actual lecture, which I'll link about how to take smart notes that Sanka Ahrens gave at a software development conference as well as his book, How to Take Smart Notes. Zettelkasten's uh, method for taking notes is really different than how we typically take notes and how I've typically taken notes up until now, which you can learn a bit about in the first video that I made about how to capture book notes in MEM. And after going through the information and the book on how to take smart notes, I realized there was a flaw in the way that I was actually taking notes because when we typically take notes, whether it's from books or whatever it is, we underline, we highlight, we may copy all of our highlights into some sort of database like MEM, but that actually is just storing references. It doesn't really turn information into insight and insight into knowledge. And that's where Zettelkasten comes in. So. <clears throat> The really there are three steps in, in this process that basically you know, create three types of notes. The first is what we've been doing all along, which is to capture information, and that's basically what you've probably done up until now, which are your highlights, underlines from books, podcasts, whatever it is. And then this is where Zettelkasten actually starts to really become much more powerful than the standard or traditional way of taking notes. Basically, what you do is you go through all of the highlights from your references and you transform those into insights. And the key to doing that is to rewrite it in your own words, because until you rewrite it in your own words, you don't really have an understanding of it. And then you have what are insights that become knowledge. And the idea behind this is to basically create a list of notes, or in this case, MEMS, that are useful without the original context. So you could actually not have to refer to the original source material and actually still find the insight valuable or the piece of knowledge valuable. A year from now, somebody else could look at it and know exactly what you're talking about. So there are three core types of notes that you'll find make up the Zettelkast method. The reference notes, which are exactly what we're talking about, the highlights and underlines. There are literature notes, which are your insights from what you've read. And then there are your permanent notes. So you could say that the workflow looks a bit like this. You transform reference notes into literature notes and literature notes into permanent notes to create a really powerful knowledge base, which becomes your Zettelkasten. So let me walk through an example of what this actually looks like in practice so that you have a better understanding of it and particularly how it works in MEM. So I recently decided to go back and go through a book called uh, Little Bets by Peter Sims. You can see here that I have all my various notes which I've copied and then the various things that I've actually bolded. Now, if you go to reference notes, you'll see here under reference notes, we have sort of anything that qualifies as reference notes. These are you know things that I've just grabbed from various uh, sources. In this case, this is from the lecture. But then these in and of themselves aren't particularly useful. So let's go back to you know the um, Little Bets book that we were talking about. So you look here and we have reference notes, which are just a bunch of highlights and, and other things. But where this becomes really powerful is when we turn reference notes into literature notes. So if I do a search for literature notes, you'll see that I have a list of all the you know various things that I've gathered from different sources. So here's a good example of a literature note. So with a literature note, what you do is you rewrite whatever that insight is from your original source. So you have the source. And if you want, you can actually put quotes from the source. I actually didn't do that here. And you don't have to do that. Some people do that. It's useful. But the thing with literature notes is they reference the original source. And from that, you can take you know, your collection of literature notes, and you can see here that we end up having a bunch of different insights from all of the knowledge that we've consumed, or all the information that we've consumed. And then you can actually turn those into permanent notes. In this case, the only reason that showed up as a permanent note is because, uh, didn't show up as a permanent note is because it's actually a literature note from the, the book. And this is my insight on what an actual permanent note is in my own words. So. The permanent notes are really your major insight. This is how we basically create knowledge. And you'll see here that I have a list of permanent notes and 
If I go here, I'll have a list of all the various permanent notes. And these are all my own sort of insights. And you can see here that these are all the things that I've, I've come up with as permanent notes <clears throat> based on my literature notes. And where this actually starts to become incredibly useful, if we go back to the original poster writer here or the original mem, <clears throat> is something like writing an article. So what's amazing is now you have this collection of literature notes from something like Little Bets, for example. Here, I forgot to put the source, but you can see here that I've made all of these different literature notes based on this book, Little Bets. And when I wanted to write an article, uh, the process was actually much more straightforward. So once you have your <clears throat> literature notes, you have your permanent notes, and you have your reference notes, it starts to become really useful because you're no longer struggling for ideas to come up with. You actually have just a list to go through. So for example, I actually decided to start writing a blog post about the concept of little bets. When you actually start to compile them and you start to collect a lot of them, they become much more useful. So here I started just making various literature notes yesterday on this book, Little Bets. And I was writing a blog post about this. And now suddenly I have all of these different notes. I can see how they connect to other books that I've read. And this drastically reduces the process for writing something like an article because you actually have all these different notes that are written in your own words and you can combine your literature notes together to actually create an article. Obviously, you're going to go through and you're going to do some editing. You're going to do some expanding on these ideas, but it dramatically reduces the amount of time. I thought that writing this blog post uh, <clears throat> about Little Bets, which is <clears throat> the creative process that a lot of iconic creators use to make their ideas happen, was going to take me about a week. And instead, because of the fact that I had all these notes on my Zettelkast and inside of Mem, I was able to actually write this entire post in about 45 minutes. And really the, the challenge with this is because these aren't in a linear order, your only job is to create the structure. And of course, you'll do some editing and some writing as well. So just to recap how this works, the first step is basically capturing information, which are going to be your reference notes, which is your highlights and underlines. The second step is going to be to go through all of them and to actually transform those into literature notes, which are your insights from those highlights and underlines. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create permanent notes. And this process isn't going to be linear per se, but it actually ends up being really valuable because you can write a lot in record amounts of time and really maximize your creative output.